First of all, I'd like to say, you know, I have been a registered Republican for about 44 years now, kind of giving away my age. And truthfully, for most of those 44 years, I could have, you know, I could have cared less about politics, had very little interest in the political machine. And back in those days, you know, I would have accepted candidates like Deb Fisher on her face value. But then, five years ago, TransCanada came calling on our doorstep. And we found ourselves being threatened with eminent domain and being bullied by a foreign corporation. So needless to say, <clears throat> my interest and the politics surrounding this project became enhanced and I have spent a great deal of time following especially Nebraska politics uh, surrounding this Keystone XL pipeline. And I must say, after observing Deb Fisher and her colleagues in this very building, it has been very disappointing and also disturbing to me because of what I have observed. I have seen a legislative body do everything in their power to help a foreign corporation with a project that could have devastating effects on Nebraskans and Nebraska's resources. And Deb Fisher has been a very large part of this. Now she says she's going to be a great representative for Nebraskans. Well, instead of speculating on that statement, let's take a look at her history. You know, back when Nebraska had no pipeline regulations, did Deb Fisher stand up because she's a great leader and say, our state needs to protect itself we need to get some pipeline regulations in place. No, she did not do that. Not at all. She was unconcerned about it. She showed no concern over the original pipeline route that went right through the sand hills. And we all know what has you know, come out about that and how risky it was. And yet, she lives in the Sand Hills. It affects her district, her neighbors, and yet she expressed no concern about it. She thought it was fine right where it was. When TransCanada was out bullying and intimidating her constituents and threatening them with eminent domain, was Deb Fisher a great leader, a great representative for those people? Did she call up TransCanada and say this cannot continue? No, she stood idly by. She did nothing. When the State Department came to Nebraska and held hearings and thousands of Nebraska citizens turned out to testify, many, right, uh, her neighbors, her constituents. Was she there to even hear the concerns of her own constituents? No. She didn't even show up. Now we did have a couple, three senators from the entire state of Nebraska that even showed enough concern to attend these meetings. Ken Har and Nat Dubas, two of them for sure, they were at both meetings. The rest of them couldn't even take the time to come and hear what Nebraska citizens thought about this project. Now, if Deb Fisher was truly a leader, I think she would be a little bit concerned about what type of materials are going to be pumped across the entire state of Nebraska. So as she stood up and said, we insist that you tell us what is going to be pumped through this pipeline. Once again, no response from Deb Fisher. 
And last but not least, when our legislators took it upon themselves last spring to pass LB 1161, virtually throwing Nebraska landowners under the bus with the eminent domain provisions in that bill, a true leader would have stood up and said to her colleagues, this is not right and we should not be doing this. But instead, she supported that legislation. So when Deb Fisher tells me she's going to be a great representative for Nebraska, I just take a look at her history and how she has voted, and I say, no way, she definitely will not receive my vote. Thank you.